Fine on the second screen. Oh. Five, four, three, Reaches two, its end. We get one. Beam. Now. Pass it. No beam. No beam. Next cycle. Next okay. cycle. <laughs> Didn't work this time. The person on the right hand yeah, side yeah, yeah. of the plane is uh, Jos Engelen, he's the director for research at CERN. Okay, ne next cycle. Prochain cycle. So it's not just like switching on your mobile phone <laughs> or your not. computer and firing it's it out. extremely complex. This person watching is also an important guy, Steve yeah. Myers. Ah, oh, they saw yeah. it, but they didn't show it to us. <laughs> now let's look here. Hi. Okay, the beam is in point five. The relief is palpable, right? Yes. Yeah. Maintenant, there it is. On va donner Play le back for us. On va donner le faisceau à, à CMS pendant un, un moment et on va aussi corriger. Okay, the CMS, the experiment CMS, the detector, uh, wanted to see beam directly with specific features, so they're going to correct the beam according to the requirements of CMS for the detector to see the passage. The detectors are there for collisions, but this is also an important moment for them, because for the first time they will see the beam through the air detectors, and they're going to also test whether it works or not. Now we see the bench profile going through the RF station at point four. This is a bunch which is one nanosecond long, so it's a, a, a good, about the most useful imperial unit is a foot, which is... <laughs> there speaks a Which bit. is the, the, the speed of light for one nanosecond, so the bunch is about one, one foot 30 centimeters long. Okay, he's giving the qualities of the bunch of protons. This is really jargon for physicists, but they are so precise that they can correct the beam according to the requirements of the machine first and then of the detectors. They want specific types of beams. So what's happening now is that they're making a number of measurements of what's happened so far, and then they're going to make critical adjustments to the beam to help the travel of the beam through the rest of the accelerator, and also to help the scientists who are going to be monitoring the experiments at the four big detectors. The beam has just passed one of the mega detectors. In fact, I think the biggest of all. No, it? it's the second biggest. It's the heaviest of all, uh -huh. CMS. Uh -huh. this is, uh, the biggest is Atlas. It's on point one. It's going, and it's going to be the one who sees the beam last, Atlas. I'm about to show you what's just happened, a replay of the beam going through point five. Halfway through the accelerator. There it is. A little pulse. <laughs> Another important milestone. So it's gone halfway round. It's just got another halfway to go. Which is not trivial because that's the halfway that is still verging. Aha. Uh -huh. So what we've seen so far, the scientists, engineers and technicians have already seen before in the last few weeks. They actually test that what you're saying? They test it sector by sector. Never like that in one go the whole half. Okay, they stopped it, of course, but uh, they, they tested sector by sector. But the second half has never seen beam. So the next stage of the beam is what you're going to call virgin territory then. Right. These machines, these sensors, these magnets have never seen the beam before. No, from point five to eight and one they haven't in the clockwise direction. So we see the beam in blue visualized on the screen from the injection point TI2, that is the transfer line from the previous accelerator, the SPS, into point two and through to point five and across the CMS detector. And it's stopped there for the moment while they make the measurements and they feel confident enough to go to unexplored territory. It's very brave of Lynn Evans and all his colleagues to do this in front of the eyes of the watching world for the very first time. That's what also what these engineers in charge think. <laughs> He's now with Steve Myers, who was the godfather of the previous accelerator, LEP, that Lynn Evans mentioned. He said it took LEP 
12 hours to make the first tour of electrons in the, in the collider. LAP was hosted in the same 27 kilometers tunnel as the LHC, but it was much less powerful, 14 times less powerful than the LHC. So it's taken under 20 minutes for the first half of this huge accelerator, the world's biggest accelerator, to see the beam go round. We should just have to wait and watch and see how long it takes for it to com complete the entire revolution. Probably another half hour. Optimistically, I'm going to say you're a brave woman. I'm not sure you'd put money on that, though. No. I was talking to Lynn Evans just a short while ago, and he said perhaps more like two hours. So I hope we're going to be patient with the scientists, the engineers, the physicists in there while they make all those valuable calculations and adjustments. They basically have to steer the beam along the right course, don't they? Yes, exactly. In a minute, we will remove the, the collimator at point 0.5, and we will progress to point 0.6. OK, they seem ready to remove the blockage at point 0.5 and go and up until point 0.6. Uh, exactly halfway around the ring. Unexplored land, never done before from 5 to 6. Gosh, I must say, okay. this is going we, faster we than I had anticipated. Just yeah. The, uh, the, the guy knows what he's up to, much more than his young right. colleagues. They're incredibly yeah. young. There are okay. people in their you 30s and their 40s doing this yeah. Yeah. under his orders. He's actually a commander, chief commander of uh, no, we, the no, we, uh, United Kingdom. Oh, yes. Of the, of the, he's got the honor of the CBE, <laughs> commander of the British <laughs> Empire. Right. He may wander around in jeans, but uh, he's a, a very respected chap, old Lynn Evans. Most of the time, in fact, he pads around in uh, trainers and in shorts, so we should be honored that he's wearing jeans today. Yeah. The, the, the effort he made today is the wearing a shirt instead of a T-shirt. <laughs> It's already a big effort for him. <laughs> so very soon, I think, they're going to remove the last uh, collimator at point 0.5, the block that's holding the beam back, and go into virgin territory. Just do one octant, I think, this time. From 5 to 6, yes. And at 6, they will probably dump the beam just to make sure they've done it properly and circulate uh, it again. On a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. It's, 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 Something uh, is happening. One, second, no, 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 down, second one in at the bottom, that one. Okay. ETV, ETV, and it's been one, of course. So the next, the, the next screen, the next screen to wa watch is this one on the, on the left. That's the, the, the screen which is in front of the external beam dump at point six. We are already all set. He was saying that we should watch the second screen in the bottom that uh, okay, will yeah. show us what's are, happening are at point six. The, it's the position near the beam dump where the beam is dumped after making okay, more than half of a circle. This, this the so the screen in the, yeah. in the middle okay. of our screen with a thick blue line running yeah. at the bottom. The what does this mean, the, the beam is dumped? In point six, when you are not satisfied with the quality of your beams at full operation, is the place where you, you, you abandon the beam. You just let it go there to circulate it again and have a new, brand new beam. This is going to be done every 10 hours when the LHC is fully operational. They renovate the beam for it to have uh, perfect qualities as required by the experiments. Uh, uh -huh. So that's the quality checkpoint, as it were. It's uh, the dumping point, and if they're not satisfied, they just let it go there. And this also has to be tested, because it's going to happen every 10 hours for six months in a row, 24 hours a day. Are they ready to go for it? <coughs> we know as much as our audience, don't we? We are sitting in a truck, television truck, just outside the control center, and the only communication we have is the same as you, <laughs> through the screens. Okay, guys. In the background, you can hear words as collimators. <laughs> These collimators are, again, 
magnets, another kind of magnets. Okay,